Hi dancers and welcome to SKR Yoga and Wellness. My name is Sam and today we are going to go through a yin yoga sequence to help improve your center splits or straddle. So of course this means we're going to be focusing a lot on opening up the hips and stretching through the inner thighs and the hamstrings. So lots and lots of lower body for this class. Two props that you will need are a strap that I have here and one or two yoga blocks. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get started without any props though. And you're gonna lie down all the way onto your back. So coming flat onto your back and we're just gonna let the knees fall open, soles of the feet come, coming together so we're in a reclined butterfly. And you can just let your hands rest on your belly. You can softly close the eyes or keep them open up to you. But we're just going to take a second here to focus on the breath. Just focus on trying to calm the mind. And of course, inevitably, once our mind starts to wander and our thoughts start to drift, always just bringing your attention back to your breath and back into your body. So to start off, I'll invite you to send your breath deep into your belly, so towards where your hands are. So your hands will rise and fall with your inhale and exhale. So really focusing on sending that breath to a very deep place in the body. Take another 10 breaths here. Try to let the hips relax. Knees are really falling open towards the floor, letting gravity do the work for you here. No gripping whatsoever.
bring your hands to the outsides of your thighs, using a little bit of arm strength to help your legs come back in towards the center. Now you'll want to grab onto your strap here, coming back down onto your back. And you're going to want to take this strap, looping it around the ball of your right foot. And then we're going to take a leg extension up towards the sky in front of you. So now we don't want to go all the way to your max right away. So I'm, I'm sure a lot of dancers watching this can pull your leg straight to your face. That's not what we're going for here. You want to grip your band a little bit farther down so that your elbows can rest onto the floor and you have very minimal arm strength here. So very minimal activation. Try to keep your shoulders relaxed and your neck relaxed so we're not tensing through the upper, upper body to pull the leg farther. We're just finding a gentle stretch through the back of the hamstrings here. And if you need to keep a slight bend in this top knee, that's totally okay as well. And we'll be here for about two minutes. Again, in this position, remembering to come back to the breath, trying to breathe from a very deep place in your belly. And this time, let's also focus on making your inhales just as long as your exhales. So trying to take very full, rounded breaths. be here for about another minute or so. From here, for the next two minutes, you're going to take both bands of your strap into your right arm and then just let your leg open up to a second position, to the side here. You might need to adjust your hold so you're holding a bit farther up the strap. Again, try to rest your elbow onto the floor here. And very important, make sure that your left hip doesn't roll off the floor. Keep it connected in towards your mat. So again, there's a very slight muscle activation in through your core here, just to keep yourself center as we stretch through the side of your leg here. And again, we're not stretching to our maximum through the hamstrings, just finding a light pull. And then again, finding your breath here. You can just let your left arm kind of rest by your side as we continue to breathe for another 10 breaths here.
very gently. Let's float the leg back up overhead and then bend into that leg. Let the strap go. Let that foot float back down onto the mat. We're gonna repeat that same thing on the second side. So taking your strap around the ball of your foot and then extending that leg up overhead. You come at your elbows, rest towards the floor. And again, using very minimal arm strength here to hold that leg upright. Trying to keep the shoulders and the neck relaxed. And as always, coming back to your breath. We'll be here with the leg forward for about two minutes. Transitioning with your leg to the side, so take your strap, put both sides into your left arm, opening that leg out beside you. Again, you can rest your left elbow onto the floor. Take a moment to get comfortable adjusting your grip somewhere that feels good. And remembering to keep the right side of your body in contact with the mat here. Might actually help to take your right arm and place it directly out beside you. And then again, coming back to your breath, breathing into the inside of your left thigh.
very slowly, without any rush, float that leg back up overhead. Release your strap and let that foot come back down onto the floor. You can release your strap off to the side. We won't need it any longer. And slowly start to push yourself back up. Coming to a seated position with your legs outstretched in front of you. And for this next posture, I am going to be using a block, but it's not absolutely necessary. We're coming into caterpillar pose. So basically just folding our body forward into this piked stretch here for the back of the hamstrings once again. I like to use the block to have somewhere to rest my forehead so I'm not fully um, letting my spine go. Um, it's just a personal preference, but totally up to you. Play with a couple different options, see what feels best. You might find that the block does really help, or you might find that not having the block intensifies the stretch through your back slightly. So again, do what's good for you, but number one thing, just make sure the backs of the legs stay relaxed, knees stay relaxed, so we're not pulling up here, we're not stretching through the feet, and we're allowing the spine to curve. So let's take an inhale and just grow up nice and tall. And then on an exhale, let your spine curve forward, chin towards your chest. And then if you have your block there, you can rest your forehead. Wherever you are, block or not, let's place the palms up, just to the sides of the legs, so we're not tempted to pull ourselves farther into the stretch here. Remember, we're not going to our maximum. As soon as you feel resistance from your muscles and your hamstrings, that's where you want to rest because we are going to be here for quite a while. So breathing in through the backs of your legs. You can allow your legs to externally rotate and flop open slightly. So we don't want to have any engagement through the legs whatsoever. And again, remembering to breathe through your back, through your posterior chain here. We'll be here for about another four minutes or so.
strength to help you roll back up. Come back up to your seated position. If you had your block in front of you, you can move that off to the side. And we have a little bit of an on transition, but you're just gonna bend your feet in and then you're gonna bring your weight onto your feet just by pushing your hips forward. And then right away, you're gonna bring your heels in, toes out. So we're coming to a little bit of a turned out position here. And then you wanna place the palms of your hands together, take your elbows to the insides of your thighs and just push those knees open. So we're coming to a yogi squat here or malasana. And because this is a yin class, trying not to engage through the glutes here. We're really sitting at the bottom of this squat, relaxing your hips down towards your heels and the very minimal amount of uh, muscle activation is coming from your elbows, just gently pushing your knees farther open. So get yourself settled in this squat. Feel that your spine is also nice and long. It should feel really lengthened after that forward fold and caterpillar pose. And we won't be here for quite as long this time. We'll take another two minutes here in this yogi squat. And you really want to send your breath deep into your belly here. Feel your belly expand and contract against your thighs in this squat. Gently releasing the elbows. We're gonna come forward onto all fours. So gently releasing out of that squat. And it might feel good, just extend the right leg out, stretching into your calf. Letting the blood flow sort of return to the lower half of your legs here after that pretty intense squat. And let's do the same thing on the left leg. Just lengthening out. Take the right leg, step it forward um, on the outside of both of your palms here. So your hands are going to be towards the inside of your right leg, back knee is still on the floor. So try to make a 90 degree angle with that right knee and then we're going to lift the toes, turn them out and then sort of sickle through your right foot. So I don't know if you can see in the camera but I'm actually keeping my foot lifted so I'm resting on the outside of my foot, not putting the entire sole of the foot on the floor. So this is called winged dragon. And if this feels slightly uncomfortable for the knee already, it might be a good idea to also just fold your mat over just to give it a little bit of extra cushion back there. Otherwise, you can just stay as you are in your winged dragon. And you're welcome to stay up onto your palms here or you can lower down onto your elbows or you can also lower down onto your blocks. So take a moment to get settled 
in whatever variation works best for you. Really breathing into that right hip. And we'll be here for a few minutes, so sending your breath deep into your belly and deep into that hip. Trying to find length and relaxation. Try not to grip through the hip at all. very slight activation through your arms so that we're not sinking into the shoulders here especially if you're down on your elbows like I am you want to keep the shoulders pressing away from your ears so again there's a very minimal activation in the upper body just to keep a long neck but everything else is relaxed try to relax your neck a little bit too here And if you were down on your elbows, come on back up to your palms. Flatten the sole of your foot back down onto the mat. Very slowly make your way back to your tabletop position. It might feel good to just sort of introduce a little bit of movement through the hips. Check in and see how that right hip is feeling. And we're going to go ahead and repeat that on the left side. So stepping the left foot forward, finding that 90 degree angle with that front knee. Hands are on the inside of your left foot. We lift the toes, curl them open, sickle towards the outside of your left foot here. And then again, if you need to pad the knee by folding your mat, feel free to do that now. And then you can stay up on your palms here or make your way down onto your elbows. Again, remembering to maintain a nice long neck with very minimal muscle activation through the upper body here. So just gently pushing the floor away from you. Breathing deeply.
if you are down on your elbows, make your way back up onto your hands. Bring the sole of your foot back onto the mat as we very slowly and very gently make your way back to tabletop. And again, it might feel good just to introduce a little bit of hip circles. Now noticing how the left hip feels after that lunge. Now for our next posture, we're coming into straddle. And I'm gonna give you two options to do this pose. So I'm just gonna do it here on my mat, opening my legs out to the straddle, coming forward, and then I'm gonna do a forward fold here. Now, a second option I will leave up to you is you can also do this against the wall. So you can lie down on your back with your legs flat up against the wall and then just allow your legs to open up into straddle. Now, just because of some wiring and the bars and the, the studio that I'm in at the moment, I'm not gonna be able to do that variation, but I do wanna offer it. Um, it's one of my favorite ways to stretch into my inner thighs to improve the straddle, but doing it in this seated position is also a really great alternative. And again, I'm going to use my block to rest my forehead. And I'm just kinda gonna get myself properly adjusted here. And again, make sure that you're fully relaxing through your legs here so we're not pulling up through the knees, we're not stretching through the feet, we're allowing the spine to curve, letting gravity do most of the work for us. So there's really no muscle activation in this straddle here. And we're gonna be here for a little while, for about five minutes, as this is a straddle class. So be sure that, again, we're not going to our max right away. As soon as you feel that resistance from the thighs, that's where you want to hold it and then you let gravity pull you forward. Same thing if you're lying on your back against the wall. As your legs open, you're not trying to push them down. Just relax. Let them hang there and gravity is very slowly going to pull them farther into your stretch. So wherever you are, whether you're against the wall or sitting on your mat like me, uh, if you're against the wall, just let your legs fall open. And if you're seated, just let your upper body fold forward elbows coming down onto the floor. Try as you do this to keep your knees pointing towards the ceiling. So if you're rolling a little bit too far forwards so that your knees start to rotate in, maybe roll out slightly, come up a little bit through the upper body. So you can keep your knees facing up. And as always, sending your breath really low into your belly, trying to make your inhale just as long as the exhale. And we'll be here for another few minutes, getting comfortable, relaxing through the legs.
use your hands either to help up your body or to help your legs come back together if you were against the wall. And slowly bring your legs back out in front of you. Maybe just give them a good shake. After that, a very deep and intense stretch. We're gonna make our way all the way down onto our backs now. Starting to wind down the class. Just take your right foot, flex through the foot and cross it over the knee. So we're making a figure four position here. And then you're gonna bend that left knee in and grab a hold of your shin here. And then from this position, you're just gonna allow your knees to fall to the left side until the sole of your right foot comes flat onto the floor here. So this is also a very light spinal twist through your lower back and you'll feel a stretch through your right glute and perhaps in through the outside of your right thigh, so into your IT band. So stretching the opposite side of your legs now just to kind of even everything out. Try to keep both shoulder blades on the floor. I'm going to open my arms up to make two 90 degree angles beside me here. And again, breathing deep into the belly, feel that twist coming from your navel. And we'll be here for about two minutes. Again, trying to totally relax through the lower body. No muscle engagement or gripping here. Just breathing. Gently bring both legs back to center. We'll uncross the right foot. And repeating right away that same thing to the other side. So crossing your left foot over. And actually I think it'll be easier if we just leave that right foot planted on the floor here as we let the knees fall over towards the right side so that the sole of your left foot comes in contact with the floor. I forgot to mention this on the first side, but if the foot can't reach all the way to the floor, it's also a good idea to put a block under the foot here, just to close that gap, and so that you can fully relax into the stretch. Again, feeling that twist coming from your navel. Keep both shoulder blades flat on the floor, collarbone pointing towards the sky. And finding your deep belly breaths.
your legs back to center. Let your legs fall down onto the mat. Arms are going to rest by your sides, palms facing up. Allow your body to be wide, take up space here. Coming into Shavasana, our closing pose here, allowing the body to fully rest and relax. Take a moment to check in with your lower body. Notice how your hips are feeling, how your inner thighs are feeling, how your hamstrings are feeling. After that fairly intense lower body practice, Notice any sensations throughout the body, any feelings of length. And we're gonna continue with those deep belly breaths in Shavasana here. Again, trying to maintain the inhale, making it just as long as the exhale. So even breaths in and out as we fully relax into our posture here. Gently start to wiggle your fingers and toes. Let your head roll from side to side. Maybe circle through your wrists and ankles. Coming back into your body. On your own time, we'll roll onto your right side. Taking a moment to breathe here. And then gently Pressing yourself up, finding a seated position. Bringing your hands together in front of your heart. Sitting up tall and bending forward, namaste. 
Thank you so, so much, dancers, for doing this practice with me. I'm sure that if you were to add this class into some sort of rotation, maybe every other week, I'm sure you would find that your center splits and straddle will start to improve. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and do subscribe to SKR Yoga and Wellness. I put out new videos in both yin and vinyasa styles every single Friday. So thank you once again and I hope to see you on the mat again soon.